Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And with this, I formally welcome you to this afternoon's conversation with BB Shashori. I believe he's here. Yes, I can see you very well. Good afternoon, BB. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? Yes, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Great, great, great. Glad to be here. Fantastic. Um, before I read your introduction, I just want to ask, how does it feel to look to look at your work over again? I know that many, many, many crazy people don't really like to look at their work. So how, how did you feel watching that trailer one more yeah, time? It was a torturous three minutes. But, <laughs> you know, thanks for putting me through it. I mean, some of the stuff is fun to remember how it was made, um, but um, and some of it I didn't even make it in there. I'm not sure the rain scene with Zane, I've even made the final cut, to be honest with you. But so interesting to see certain things but um yeah it was could be much better okay all right thank you very much so um just by way of introduction this you're welcome to the, to the covenant nation um film and theater community group this community groups have been set up across the church to address various um, industries so people in different industries are sort of clustered together to foster not just bonding but really professional development and so this is the film and theater community group and we run in semesters every semester lasts about uh, 12 weeks or so. So this is the first semester in 2021. So what we have here is a collective of young filmmakers and many of them have really been looking forward to um, your session. So we have chats every Sunday afternoon at between four and about 5.30, 6 p.m. and thereabout. So ladies and gentlemen, today we have the pleasure of hosting Bibi Shashore. He's the co-founder and, um, and Nemshare's creative director. And again, I'll come, probably come to that if we have some time, what, what Nemshare means. Okay, and he, though his bad background is in biological sciences film school with a passion for telling stories and again guys you might notice that quite a number of people who play in this industry are those who do not have a background in it so to speak so again maybe you might want to touch on that he's worked on several independent projects in many capacities however his forte is in writing and again maybe maybe recently in, in directing as well uh, he's the producer of before 30 Banana Island Ghost, which I'm sure a lot of us have seen, and then God Calling. And so without further ado, Bibi Shashori this afternoon is going to be, we're going to be having a chat with him. Um, again, it's it's kind of specific to your project on God Calling. Um, but just tell me what 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 led you into, into the arts? Into, I mean, from, from a from a left brain science background into telling stories. I think I was you know, terrible at one and better at the other. It's just a simple answer to that, you know. Um, I, I, like any kid, you know, did decent in math and sciences and sciences. So I was, I wanted to be a doctor, I was going to be a brain surgeon. And then, you know, you get through, you know, the biologies and the chemistries and you get an A's and then you get to the, you know, organic chemistries and you get to B and you get to the biochems and you get in C. And, and quickly you're like, yeah, well, I, and I, you don't like working hard, you don't like reading books. So you're like, maybe it's not, but what you find yourself doing is what the call, as you grow older, what the calling is so, sort of becomes more apparent. So I'm um, mm -hmm. staying up, you know, the night before MCATs, I'm watching movies. And, you know, and my <laughs> friends are like, oh, you don't want to do this thing now. Why are you, why are we deceiving ourselves? Yeah. Um, so I was fortunate to have friends who would sort of, you know, speak truth to me. You know, I, I, I went on a lovely backpacking thri trip through Europe. And um, my buddy, I remember when the train from France to Belgium, and he was like, you don't want to be a doctor. He's a white guy, but yes, he's like, I, I don't understand this experience you people have with your parents where you can't tell them what the truth, but you don't want to be a doctor. So, you know, so, and then I was like, yeah, you know, so I went back to film school. Uh, my parents are much more understanding than I thought they'll be, you know, really interesting. And my brothers helped me fund my film school bit, you know, took some Sally Mae loans as well and stuff. And, and from the rest of the sort of history, just sort of, you know, um, I think the, I, sorry, by the way, I, I'm extremely verbose and I'm conversational. So deep it's on, He's got so it. Whenever, if it's rambling off topic, you know, like shut up, get back to it, you know, that sort of thing. But um, I find that film school was great for me from a structural standpoint. I always tell people when they ask about film school or not film school and YouTube and all that stuff. And I'm like, for me, the answer is relatively simple in terms of the kind of person you are. I am a relatively lazy person in terms of self-motivation. I like to do things that I like to do. 
And that's most of us, but some people are able to motivate themselves to do things they don't like to do. And what I mean by that, no matter what your passion is, there's the on, you know, the not sweet side of it, you know, not pleasurable bit of reading things of, you know, drafting, there's legal stuff, there's documents, there's all those things, administrative stuff. So the not sweet side of teaching yourself film is the teaching yourself film, not the actual. So right. every day filmmakers get up and make films, no matter what it is, make content, I should say. Right. So if you're someone who does that, if you're someone who gets up every day and writes, gets up every day and picks up a camera, no matter what it is, and you're shooting stuff and you're forming, you know, stories, so to speak, then you really don't need film school. Because when you run into that problem, you'll be able to find what the solution is. That's where forums, YouTube, all that stuff is. I'm someone who needs a project before I pick up a camera. Oh, so we're going to do this big thing. It's called God Calling. Oh, it's going to be great. It's a script. Oh, someone's going to fall from the bridge. And then I'm like, all right, I get excited. Right. But there's people who don't need that to get up every day and shoot something. And you would force yourself to talk about lenses, force yourself to talk about f-stop, force yourself to talk about cinematography, force yourself to talk about character arcs. Force yourself. If you're that sort of person, you don't need to go to film school. Film school for people like me makes you get up and do it every day. It says today, this is the homework. Today, you got to do the, the look at a camera, look inside this box. Da, da. So if you I think the biggest thing in this space, um, because it's a sexy space, because it's an appealing space, is as opposed to banking or any of these other things is that it is so not structured that the thing you need to do is self-aware you need to be very self-aware about what am i good at am i a lazy person am i a motivated person am i you know a structured person am i a dreamer am i all those things and once you know what you don't know then you surround yourself quickly with those things i think that's the biggest sort of lesson that you can you can get because and then when you do nigeria is actually great you know because it's in its infancy right nollywood is in its infancy so it's the charlie chaplin day right so anybody wanted to make a film then could make a film then now in hollywood you actually have to be good and know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody and have luck and stroke of lightning and a million things have to happen for you to make a film in hollywood in hollywood you just need to want to make a film it's li literally that simple it's 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 crazy but it's that it's if you really are determined to make this, you will make it, right? So the big thing to not wasting that resource, that effort, that opportunity, all that is being self-aware, is knowing what you don't know, right? And once you know that, you know, like, oh, Deepo knows that, so I'm going to bring him in. And then this person, and then this person, and then boom, it's now. So what you guys are doing is fantastic already, right? It's, it's, it is a bit of a film school. It is a structured Sunday, 4 o'clock to 5.30, we meet. We shoot the breeze, we talk stuff, we enjoy ourselves, and we get to learn. And we force ourselves into a system, a structure. I would advise that as you progress through that deeper, maybe what you start doing is maybe a bit of assignments because it will force the people who don't, right? It's not you get punished if you don't do it, but it's this sort of by next week, come with blah, 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 right? And it'll, because we enjoy it already. If you don't enjoy it, you're just in the wrong place completely. But if you enjoy it, the problem is motivating yourself to do that next thing. So as you put some structure in place, that could be really interesting and really helpful for you guys. I don't know, but that's what helped me. Yeah, yeah. So, so thanks for that. And you know, so for 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 this semester, we actually have projects. So we've got smaller teams of filmmakers who are working on short shots, and then there's also a theater spin to this, and they're also working on a stage stage production. So the whole idea is to put all of these things into into practice. So thank thank you very much for that. Although I must say very quickly that I I see how your your left brain sort of works in filling the gaps, you know. <laughs> so you know, so you learn what you don't know essentially, or you surround yourself with resources that that complement you, so 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 to speak, which is pretty much like a lab scenario where you're you're solving X and you're trying to find so almost by solving by elimination. Anyway, cool. So I'm going to go right into it because people here are they're really primed to understand. Uh, I, th I think God calling is perhaps one of the biggest faith movies in recent times. So question one is, how, how did your faith influence the production of this movie? Was it, was it just another film for you, another project, another, okay, let's get up and do this, or did it have a bit more of D.B. Shashori in it? So I think we should always speak the truth anyway, and I think it's very important to speak the truth even more so when it's you know um, a faith-based body. Um, it's not as inspirational as you think. I gotta be honest with you, you guys. Um, I think for, um, and I should caveat that by saying, 
just from the responses. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not as strong in my faith as I would like to be. So let me say that. But I would say just from the responses, it's weird how God works, right? Because just from the responses alone, my film has ended up preaching to me, right? Um, in that I started it as something really tactical. And I know for a fact that is not my work that is making people respond like this. It's not, right? So I, I'm not one who's super um, immersed in the idea of miracles and so on, which the film has, right? It was written thinking, I'm writing this for them. Now it's not for me, it's for them. And weirdly, the miracle that I see now is, is not you, this is not your power. We, people crying and all that was not the intention, was not the point, was not, it was the, I really felt as though, I understand church now. My mom is extremely religious, right? So I grew up in a church. Um, we've been to the same church really for 40 years till she passed or so for my entire lifetime. Um, and other than when I, you know, traveled abroad and there's such a great story that I won't waste you guys time on. But when I really was not going to church was when I traveled and I was living abroad. And then we would only go to church when our mom comes to visit. And there was this one time that we didn't have a home-based church and we liked that we had a home-based church. And my mom came and it was a disaster. You cannot, I can't wait to make that film someday. It was an awful disaster because I used to go to this church to play basketball. And I used to go there on weeknights. So I used to go there only on weeknights. And it's this, I moved to the Midwest. I moved to Chicago and then to Indiana um, from New York. And in the Midwest, you know, church after church after church. So I used to go there on weeknights and drive on this poorly lit road, but it's a major road that just had quite a few churches, but I never knew because the church I used to go play basketball had this big cross on it. So I, you know, I digress, but it's a great story. Please trust me. So I went there. I was like, oh, no, no. so I told my buddies, I was like, hey, you won't understand, but my mom is coming to visit. I need the church. So you guys, when I get to service, just be like, hey, BB, what's up? You know, like, like, like I come here every Sunday kind of deal, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, 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 no doubt, no doubt. And on that Sunday, first of all, my German mom, she's taking her time, she's decking up, and she was trying. And I thought the time was uh, 10, 10 a.m. First of all, it was nine. Then I get, we get going on, we get onto the road, and it is just cross after cross after cross, like Indiana church country. And I, can't, I, can't figure out the church out. I can't figure out the church And I never backed down from a lie. This is who I was back in those days. So like, I, I was like, and she could kind of start to sense. And then I'm like, man, I have no choice. So I just pulled into one, right? And got there, got to the door that was with all the cars and that door was locked. So we had to go around to the other side of the church, which is the door that they use for this service. And she's just like, show more church too. So do you know this church I'm saying you go to? What are you, what's happening? And as we get to the front door, the average age in this church is 65. They're all white. And it is an Anglican church where they are finishing. So there's a procession coming out at us as we're walking in. And as soon as they see us, they're so happy. Oh my God, you look lovely. Welcome. How can we help you today? And my mom's like, proper Nigerian, she, she punished me. Oh, what do you mean? My son goes here. He's here every weekend. And like, no, oh, man, we've never seen you before. What's your name? And she did it person after person after person. Anyway, it gives you a background of the kind of, the reason I say is because kind of home I grew up in where church is important to us, right? And faith is important to us and we grew up Bible study and all that stuff, right? So until I sort of grew into my own person about my own faith and, and things like that. But why I say it's not as inspirational is because we um, had made Before 30, which we made because we believed when we first got back, we wanted to make something and we believed that Men mainly watch sports and news. And so we wanted to make something for women. We had decided that tactically. And then we looked across board and said, what subject matter should we talk about for women? And it was like, oh, well, you know, marriage, culture, that sort of thing. So that's how Before 30 came to be. And then we wanted to make a feature a few years later. And everybody was telling us at the time from distributors, exhibitors, everybody, you need to make a comedy. You need to make a comedy. That's what's selling, you know, put some stars in it. And I just, I've never really been one to follow stuff. So I sort of tried to make the kind of comedy I would want to make, and, you know, so it was like, how do I make something sort of different and, you know, 
has a bit of fantasy and things that I would think I would like. So it was my spin on a comedy and I had no business trying it because I'm not a funny person. I don't like comedy. I, I'm not, you know, I like relatively serious pictures, but that's why that came. And then this go around, it was like, well, you know, these worked, what space do you think you want to play in? And it was like, I actually think nothing has been made in the faith-based space that I kind of like. I didn't like um, a lot of even the movies abroad in the faith-based space. I thought they were, relatively formulaic and so I said to myself I do need to make something relatively formulaic because it's a genre pick I'm not going to betray the genre right so at the end of the day and please again forgive me because I don't mean to be trivializing it I'm just walking you through what the mindset huh. but I said you know at the end of the day it's a faith-based pick so Jesus good devil bad whatever you do that must happen right so don't don't try and make something ambiguous enough that you're trying to kind of because that's my tendencies I like to live in the grace right I hate black and white I like to well, well what's the real sort of gray about this but I was like you have to be honest in the genre pick and then I thought of the stories growing up right I thought of bible stories and I thought of the stories growing up and the only thing that kept coming back to me was um for the kind of world I would like to make I would like to make a an old world Abraham story, right? It's got fantasy, Elijah's got chariots of fire coming down to swoop him up. He'll walk, you know, miles for weeks with slippers and then get to some woman's house and she'll give him some oil and bread. And, you know, that stuff looked interesting to me. Nothing modern sort of looked interesting to me, right? But that looked interesting. So I said, well, the way to do that, because we don't have the money to pull off one of those, right? Even a Jesus of Nazareth story. So I said, what would a prophet look like today? Right. And I've always been obsessed with the modern African woman. I think she's the most amazing creature species wise in our world. I just think the amount of stuff they have to actually go through and then juggle with culture and progression and modern and, and religion. And it's it's fascinating to me how the modern I, I watch my wife and, you know, women around me. And it's just boggling to me how they juggle all these things. So I was like, well, what would it be like if a prophet today, Abraham today, Moses today, Elijah today? was a woman in Lagos, Nigeria, with modern day technology. How would God speak to that person? And so once I had the tenets of, I wanted something very true to the genre. Again, I don't like great, but I need to be great. Jesus, good, devil, bad, right? Those are, that's my barrier. They don't stray, don't stray. Um, now, fantasy, miracles, the power of God. I think that's the way to say it. Show me the power of God because we see that in the Old Testament constantly, right? Um, and we do in the New Testament, you know, Paul and so on, but you see the power of God. He felt like God walked amongst you, right? In the Old Testament, right? So how do you show that? And then put that in the framework of today, a modern African woman, technology, all of that, streets of Lagos, go. And that's how it sort of came to be. Um, so it's not as inspired as it should be i didn't wake up and swell up with the idea it was very sort of methodical a bit but i think the part that should inspire you that inspires me is you thought you could strategize god i mean right. well look at the result and none of it is just it's like people call me now to pray and say you know speak to me and da, da, da. i cry what he did to my son like you know so, so i i'm i'm like okay i hear it's, it's that same thing when i was walking to the church with my mom and she's like you go to church you gabby it's the same thing it's that god saying she's strategy now so if you, do, you, just, you know what i mean now. yeah okay okay pray for this woman now so it's clear to me okay this is not my power i hear you i hear you we won't strategize again we'll ask what message you want to send and we'll you know I'm not sure I'll do a faith-based film again because the pressure and the responsibility is so it's, faith is amazing. It really is the connection between people and their God. But I love the I love the way it was taken away from me and 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 it was made into its own thing. I must say, I I do feel that genuinely. And so, you know, there's that. So I hope it's not a downer to people that it wasn't as inspired um, and focused more on the effects of it. well things one and and tell the truth and that's one thing i sort of observed in preparing for this session i watched quite a number of your interviews that were available and you know i noticed that you're very you're very um 
they're very open, you know. So you 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 wouldn't you wouldn't create a a fuss about anything, especially about your movies, which is one of the next points we're going to go into about the the financial returns of making a a, a, a faith based production. I, I was reading an article recently about you know you not not having made you know, haven't recouped the investment that went into the production. So let's talk about that a bit, you know, has this been financially rewarding or gratifying? Okay, again, not to scare you, and you're right, I do, I do tend to try to be as open as I can be, because I think um, one of the biggest, um, you know, challenges that we have in Nollywood versus in other film markets is our cultural natural instinct. Um, we've sort of had to fight for everything we've got as just as a Nigerian, right? Um, and we sort of lose the sense of community. It's it's really unfortunate, but that's one of the biggest things I, I think growing up in back in the days, at least that's what our parents told us is that there was such a strong sense of community. You walk down the road and your neighbor is telling your kids what, what and taking home. And I think it has been eroded over time. And then also because as a Nigerian, you just sort of have to really struggle and hustle and fight for everything you get that you feel as though if I'm giving out a Naira, I want to be getting back too. And there's no sense of investing that Naira into a system that all of us are just investing in, right? And so now you're getting a lot back from the community because it's grown so exponentially. So I really am passionate about that. I'm passionate about the idea of knowledge share. That is something that I think, regardless of what else is happening in Nollywood, you just need to be doing, right? Forget the idea of whether or not you're using the right camera, whether or not you're it just, at the end of the day, are you telling back people the experiences you had so that they're also sharing their experiences? And because I learned more about filmmaking from people in California, and that's just crazy. And that's nuts. There's some things that they're going to know because we haven't experienced yet. They are going to have more information about different lens flares, right? About different, you know, sort of whatever, um, um, screamers for, lights or whatever you know led lamp sort of coloring and temperature and things technical things they're going to have problems, but they don't understand what it means to have to deal with extras to have to deal with traffic to have to deal with agbiru to have to deal with you know non-permitted areas that you're shooting and and all kinds of things right so those are things that we should easily just share with one another and learn and that's why i'm sort of passionate about what knowledge here now that being said, the downside of that is I try to speak what I think is true. And I don't think it's a downside. You hear people in Silicon Valley always say, or oh, one of the best advices I've heard that they say in Silicon Valley is about starting a company or a tech startup is like the first advice smart people give you is don't start it, right? Because if you listen to that advice, you were not meant to start the company in the first place anyway, right? So the first advice I'm going to tell you on Hollywood is there's no money, zero money. Okay, it, it, even the people you believe make money don't make money, all right? There's no money. There's maybe 10 people in the whole industry making any money on a repeated basis, okay? There was a Nollywood before that made money. There was a DVD market. It made sense. Before people could pirate it, they were able to churn out a profit and they did so many of them so quickly and so intelligently that those made money. There's still a small bit of that industry that does that on YouTube and so on. But for the most part, that industry is dead. That industry probably right now has been cannibalized by probably Roko, who is probably the smartest at it, but it's them making all the money for the individuals, not before where each individual was making their own. And this producer you've never heard of before in Enugu and Asaba can make 10 films this month and make 4 million now because he's making for 400K on each one. And if they're making 4 million now through the year, it's good, good living, you know what I mean, each month. So it's more than some bankers. So that's when they were saying people were making money. That's kind of gone. So if your premise is to make films because you want to make money, gone, it's not there, it's not happening. So just forget it, pack it up, forget it, toast. Now, why you do need to make money is so that you get to make another film, right? And I know to people who don't care about films, that sounds like a terrible, so I'm making money not to go on vacation or to buy bands or to have money in my savings account. I'm just making this film to make enough money to get somebody else to convince me to make another film. Yeah, that's all there is. But what a great life. I get to make this film, and a couple of years later, I get to make the next film, and I get to make the next film, and I get to make the next film. Very few people can say that you did that through your lives, right? That's a great life. So if that's all you got to do through your life, great. If you hate that, leave. There's no money. There's no money for Birkin back. It's not here. There's, it's not here. It's a lie. It's a lie. So anybody telling you that it's there is a lie. 
Now, why they do that is because part of the packaging to make it seem like they can get the next bit of money is to say, oh, this made 400 million. But let's just take one example, just that makes it very simple, very quickly, so that there's no arbitrary thinking about it. Wedding Party was made by one of the best ensemble teams called El Fiki, right? So Ebony Life, L, uh, Film One, Fee, Koga Studios, K, and uh, Inkblot, El Fiki, right? So they came together and they made this thing called Wedding Party. And they made it for 120 million naira. And it went on to smash every box office record and da da da, da and made 450 million naira. Now, 450 million naira in the cinemas, you pay 10% to the government in tax. Then the cinemas take 55%. Then the distributor takes 12%. At the end of the day, you average out to about 33% of your money. So 450 million, right, turns out to be about 100 and, you know, 38 or something million minus the 120 million. And that entire group made 18 million naira in cinemas. But we're all shouting, wedding party, there's money. <laughs> now, yes, Netflix paid them something else. I don't know, they, the number fluctuates, say maybe it's 200K, but they paid them over five years for, per quarter. So at the end of the day, that's one of the highest grossing. One of, that's like our Titanic. Now, the new anomaly that people will tell you about, and every time you bring examples, the reason you're giving me an example is because it's an anomaly. The rest is not the truth, it's not the standard. Yes, Omoghetto, I don't know the number of what it cost her. I would guess somewhere in the neighborhood of she's commanding enough to do stuff in a range of 50 to 80 to 100 million. So, and then it's not that expensive. So maybe, maybe I would say if I'm guessing 60 million is what she spent on it. And she went on to make 690 million. There's no way she didn't walk away with a ton of money, right? But again, that's Avengers Endgame for us. It's not normal. That's not, and Funke Akindele has invested 20 something years of hustling and building a fan base over time, which by the way, didn't translate in all the other things she was doing, right? So she's been a bunch of movies, a bunch of people's movies that didn't sell 600 million. So that was the life around the right project, the right, there's no saying she's going to make another one and it will make that. Right, so you can't use those as yardsticks for how profitable the industry is. So it's not even necessarily about God calling. The industry is not profitable. It's not, and it's a function of distribution, which comes back to why we did God calling, which I said is very methodical. The industry is not profitable, and it's even less so now. We thought the internet proliferation of the internet would make it even better. It's even worse because what has happened with the internet is because it's not mainstream broadband across the entire country right? It's still a segment of us that can use the internet to stream long form content, which is what films are or TV shows, right? So people can watch clips, watch little football highlights, watch all that on YouTube, even your game man. So yes, it's getting better. But for the most part, people are not going to watch an hour of Game of Thrones or a full, full movie of Wedding Party or Morghetto on their phone on YouTube if they're in Zamfara or by Elsa, right? So the internet, what it's now done is it's crystallized the two windows into cinema, and Netflix. Yes, Hiroko is playing somewhere in there. Yes, Africa Magic, Star Times, they have, but your big windows. And when I mean by windows, I mean, these are the people that are likely to give you a chunk of money that will pull away from your budget. The rest of the people are only gonna give you peanuts, right? So you may do some in-flights, you may sell to one or two stations in Italy or in France that have a Nigerian audience, but those people are gonna be giving you, oh, here's $5,000, you know, here's $2,000. Those are not going to take whole chunks away from your $100,000 film, right? So if Funke Akindeli made, I'm guessing, but if she made this for 50 or 60 million, she's got to make a sizable chunk of it back in cinema and a sizable chunk of it in Netflix. And hopefully she did enough to make maybe a little profit, maybe just a little loss, but the people who invested in it, they like it. It's a sexy business. They went to premiere, they did their bada like this. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I will do the next one. Yeah. And that's success as far as it's concerned. So if you're there for money, now we tried a growth hack. We tried to hack the system to see if we could help distribution because distribution is the problem, right? And people keep saying, if you can just exponentially grow the cinemas, you hear from once it is not their presentations. We have 40 cinemas now, we need 40,000. If we can just get to 4,000, that means a Omoghetto that made 600 or 700 million, multiply that by 100, not by 10, 400 in be by 10. So if they sell 600 million, they will make 6 billion, they'll make 60 billion in 4,000 cinemas. But it's not that simple. 
Because to get to 4,000 cinemas, you need to have places you can put it where people can actually afford 2,000 tickets and all that, which is why investors and institutional money has not done that investment yet, because we just don't buy everything. You can see the same track record, not to make people feel bad, but Chicken Republic, we get to 70 stores, stop shop, right? You get to 50 stores. There's not that thing that we've rolled across our entire mass that you can see from top to bottom. This is serving. So there's not really confidence, at least from me, that cinemas are going to get to 4,000. Maybe they'll get to 200, you know what I mean? But this is circa where we're going to be. Um, and then the internet until it properly proliferates, right? Netflix won't have any competition. So they're here, well, you people now, they're here for the long haul. They're here thinking to themselves, 10 years from now, your git man is going to be able to stream Game of Thrones on his phone. We need to be the only option of content that they're watching. That's why we're investing heavily now in that stuff, trying to pull. So you're down to two windows. So it's really not it. Now we tried a growth hack, like I said, which is, ooh, what if churches became distribution hubs, right? That's interesting. What if pastors became our influencers instead of Instagram model that's doing, hey, what's my thing on there? What if it's a pastor? That's doing? What if we had a base of people that could watch these films, right? That's untapped completely. That's why I went to God. So that's, I told you, I got a little laugh. You think you can strategize me? No problem. Don't worry. So we didn't make any money, but his message is going. He's going. He's going. He's going. He's fine. Crying. People are praying. But we didn't make any money. Nothing. Nothing. So he, he just don't. Do you understand my point? Like you can't strategize God, right? So is there a market that says maybe? And I do believe it. I do believe that's something that every pastor I went to talk to, I said it's a symbiotic, symbiotic relationship you have a way that you can really, your, your entire goal and mission is spreading the word, isn't it? And yes, I'm not necessarily here with the exact same mission as you, but I am here with a mission to grow an industry and symbiotically they can grow. And in fact, Nollywood can become the faith-based central of the world in a sense. Like that's what I was trying to sell people is because your, first of all, not only do you have all the numbers and the church and all that, it's even in other worlds. In other communities, there's redeemed all over. There's all kinds, you know, so that was the sort of goal. Well, like I said to you, you can't really strategize God. So maybe if we had come from a place of truly wanting to spread the message, boom, maybe <laughs> we will be having a uh, million in our pocket now. But as it turns out, uh, the Mel Gibson strategy of uh, let's just try and sell through churches, which is what Passion of Christ did. He basically first went and showed a bunch of churches. My partner read a Harvard paper on it, did a lot of research on Passion. So we, we felt really sort of, clear as to what we're doing we thought ah, we got this yeah but that is another medium that i do think should be a hub i do think churches should become screening rooms for of course their own genre faith-based and not just faith, things that are family friendly you know kids movies all that like this should be a place that every sunday night you should know that you can go to the church watch a movie get a popcorn pay something sit with a crowd that's you know loving family oriented you know safe watch a great movie that sort of thing. That I think can happen. I don't know when or if it will happen, but that is why we thought of faith based on what we want. So I hope I haven't scared people away, but that's just the reality of the industry in terms of profitability. And we have not broken even yet on, on um, God calling, but unlike the other things that we did with, with Bananagos, where we struggled to, to try to break even and investors are like, oh, what's going on? I would tell you, I'm, that, this is what I'm saying to you, it's not me. I get what his plan is, he gets it. The investors, all of them, great movie, don't worry about the money. Don't worry about the money. So he was clear, you, you won't make money. You, you this BBY, I know you make money. Your investors don't worry you, don't worry, nobody will disturb you. But the message is in Houston, they are calling me. Uh, come and pray for me. So he, he knew what he was doing. We don't, I don't fight with him again. He knows, he knows what he's doing, he has so far. So, so that, that next time you probably should just come clean, right? With your <laughs> just come clean with your intent. <laughs> so, you <laughs> so, so give me the message you want me to go and make, eh? and then get the people that will make it and make it. That's really the strategy, if I'm being honest, right? You have the talent. Nobody's saying you shouldn't make something that you're passionate about. You have the talent. You want to tell a faith based film, but let it be from an honest place. And I think I can honestly say. It was from a very strategic place, right? And he's the master strategist now. So your own strategy, not bad, but I'll be strategizing before they born the person that born you, that born you, that born you, that born you. So let's see where you, you know. 
Great, great, great. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, this is Bibi Shashore, the director of God Calling, and we're having such an interesting time this afternoon. So Bibi, we're going to take a slight, you know, this is going to be like a segue into another segment of this. And I want to ask, you've done Before 30 and you've done Feature Length. What's the fundamental difference in the two, uh, I don't know if you call them genres, so between producing Feature Length movies and producing series? Formats, formats, basically. Um, so. Um, I think it is kind of what you think it is, which is the, the, the biggest thing is time and thus investment. Um, with television, because the investment is so huge and the time is so huge, and I take that, I mean, abroad, right, they spend 200 million on a film, so that investment is just as big, but the time investment requires so much infrastructure with television because it, it needs to be safer. You almost have to guarantee that after spending so, so much money on so many episodes and so much time because it's now not two hours of picture. It is at minimum, if it's a limited series or it can be six hours, right? So, but for most things, it's 10 episodes or, you know, whatever, 20 episodes, 50 episodes. Sometimes it goes, you know, Japanese stuff goes to, you know, 100 episodes. So, um, the infrastructure is so much more formulaic, is what I would say. That's shifting a little bit in Hollywood, right? In Hollywood, 20 years ago, TV was a set way, you know, studios make people laugh. Even the ones that were not, they had a set formula, law and order type stuff. Now you have some of the Game of Thrones stuff, some of the really sort of that they could be films, but they're becoming TV. But still, television is a lot more formulaic than film. Now, why this doesn't matter too much here? And I'll get to where it matters. It matters in the financial platform side of it. But in the storytelling side of it, it doesn't matter too much because Nollywood is in its infancy, right? So at the end of the day, when things are just starting out, it is the formulaic stuff that you do, right? I respect and admire people who are like, oh, this, this, oh I, re I see critical stuff all the time. This is rubbish, you know, where's the Quentin Tarantino stuff? And where's the, and it's like, that's great. That's all well and good, but... HBO came out because people were tired of CBS and Fox and NBC and so on, right? And I'm sorry, I keep using American references, this sort of where I sort of cut my teeth and what I can, but my point is there's a formula and then people get tired of that formula. And so they try something different, but we haven't done enough to even have a formula yet. So it's not to discourage people from trying things different, go ahead by all means, but understand that most things are still going to be formulaic. So when you say people say, oh, first of all, we ever seen this in mind, is this comedy, is this, it is because it's the growing pains of an industry, right? You don't teach a child, you know, neurophysics. It, you just, you start one plus one is two. And then you say it again, one plus one is two. And then you say it again, one plus one is two. What is one plus one is two? And what is one plus one? It's, a, it's the growth of an industry, right? So we're first picking up the first cameras. So of course, the thing you're going to make is the thing that you've seen that you thought you liked. And this, we're not going to start making Fellini stuff and. Kubrick stuff and you know all that stuff takes time as an industry to sort of grow through so it's okay for our films to be formulaic so what I mean by that is the difference in filmmaking between tv and film is not going to change much in this part of the world because we're still in the early days right so we're still learning how we want to let me prove it to you let me give you a, a different example if I ask any of you what the visual language of um Nollywood is I don't think you could tell me because I don't know but if I say to you, what's the visual language of Bollywood? You have a, when, once I say Bollywood, something comes into your mind. Once I say Asian cinema, something comes into your mind. Once you say Hollywood, something. Else. So what comes to your mind for Nollywood? It's not nothing. Maybe you say slapstick comedy or something, but my point is we haven't even developed that, right? That anywhere in the world you go and you say Nollywood, they know this is it, right? Heck, Canningwood has more of a visual language than Nollywood. And that's because they have a Bollywood influence, right? So. At the end of the day, early days, very, very early days. So you don't have to worry too much about storytelling or technical stuff from a film versus TV standpoint, but you do from a financial standpoint. So let's get to that. Technically, you can fund a film. You cannot fund a TV show, or it's a waste of money. Maybe you can fund a web series, right? A small form, web, 10, 10 minutes, cool this, six episodes, 10 episodes. I'm gonna put it on YouTube, Hopefully someone sees it and gives me something in future or we get advertising, we get some sponsors, cool. But that's not television, right? It's like big proper television type stuff. And you don't want to fund television with your own money. Heck, to be honest with you, you don't want to fund film with your own money. The essence of film is other people's money. 
go and beg Gipo. I'm doing this. Can you bring your own? Okay, I've set you up. So all of them will now ask you for their uh, contribution to the thing that they are doing. You that's how you get it. You ask Gipo, he will bring his own. You ask your uncle, you ask this, you ask the all bring up. That's the way you're bringing the sweat, the talent, the all that stuff, the dreams, all that mm -hmm. stuff, right? So at the end of the day. I think to myself, you don't want to fund TV, film, but you certainly don't want to fund TV. And it's difficult to get platforms to give you, it's a commission, right? So you go to Africa Magic, you sit down in the office, you say, what are you trying to make? And they, even they don't know. They'll say, you go and bring stuff. They know, but they won't tell you. And what, what they really are saying is, it's partly we don't know, but it's also we don't trust you yet. Right. So the minute Shonda makes something that's interesting to people, now all of them are like, what we want to make is like Shonda. All they're saying is we trust Shonda. Because if Shonda wanted to make something completely different, they say, yeah, that's what we're looking for. It's the, all they're saying is we trust Shonda. Right. So TV platforms aren't very good at telling you what they want. What they're waiting for is we trust you now. And when we trust you, James Omokwe, he did uh, Add Your Chair now, he's doing another 250 episode one, you know, I read that in Aqua, I don't remember what, but once we trust you, now we're willing to listen to what you have to say, right? So that's difficult. I don't have an answer for how you break that, but overall film versus TV, I wouldn't worry so much about the technical or storytelling side of it. They follow some of the same typical sort of structural tropes and structural scripting and, and making, filmmaking and all that. It is really now from a place of where is it going to sit? How is it going to monetize? How do you pay back people? And how do you get to make another one? Because remember, the only reason why you're making money from this is to get to make another one. It's not to buy a Benz. I can promise you that. I tried to use God to buy Benz. It didn't happen. What chance do you have? It's not going to happen with your comedy. So trust me, it is to get to make another one. That is the success. That's, that's success. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the influence of of people who fund your movies. Have you ever had to deal with having them making creative input into your project? So, I mean, someone has given you a couple of millions and now they want to say, I want that actor, you know, I want, you know, have you, have you ever had to deal with that sort of uh, uh, crisis? Yes, for sure, for sure. Um, and I, I, I think, again, because you're in the infancy of an industry, you're lucky. When Disney, gets you and signs you to some $10 million picture, you don't have to see. You don't have to see in the matter. They'll tell you, this is the cast. This is the, this, this is it. They'll let, bring your treatment, bring your mood board in. Then they'll look at themselves, all these suits that are MBA, Harvard grad, that are, say, that's nonsense, that's nonsense, that's nonsense. Cut that out, bring this producer, add this person. Add. You don't have to see. You're just happy to be there, okay? Somewhat of the same stuff is happening, right? But you have a say. Now, there's no such thing as blacklist in the industry. So I'm going to teach you something bad. Don't do it all. But technically, if Deepo gives me his 10 million naira now, and somebody else gives me 10 million, and three people give me 10, and I have 10 million, and I go, I want to make a film. And Deepo is saying, I really think that Zena would be perfect for this. And then I can say, yeah, 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 okay, okay. And then not listen to him. He doesn't have recourse. But the problem is Deepo will never fund your film again. So you just need to weigh out what the, so the best and responsible thing to do is you need to convince these people that you understand their point of view, but you are actually the best person to make this choice. And here's why you're making this choice, right? The biggest thing is getting them to trust you, not the choices, not the debates, not the, because people, again, it's a sexy industry. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion on it. That's, it's, it's creative now. If you go inside, uh, a house, you know what I mean? And you see, and it's lovely and it's well decorated. And the ideas start coming like, oh, I wish they put the chair here. I wish they did. That's what happens. People, everybody, even when you're not creative, you have an opinion on it. So that's normal. What you need to do is get them to trust you. And sometimes it's tough, right? So people don't like to be dismissed. So don't, I said that first point just to let you know that technically, legally, they don't have a say, right? So the way I like to do, and, and I'm producing my first two projects this year, and you know, in terms of I'm actually saying, hey, here are two filmmakers that I've really liked to follow for a while. I like what you guys do. I'd like to help you make your own first features and things like that. And for those people, I want them to make what I think they would be super comfortable with, right? So I like your mind already. I trust that. You're not going to always have that, right? But you also need to know the kind of person you are. I am a collaborative filmmaker. 
I like all that input. So um, it's easier for me to give comfort to the investors and people who like to put that input. Where I struggle is the line to say, okay, that's enough input now, right? You can tell that Tarantino doesn't want any input. And why should he have any input? His mind is crazy. You, you are not seeing the things he's seen now. Just watch his stuff. You know that you're not seeing what is inside his own. So why are you putting your mouth there? You don't get it. You don't get it. Christopher Nolan, when Interstellar, when you watched it, did you think you could add advice to that? There's nothing you want to add to you. You're not seeing what is here now. So what's your advice? It's meaningless. In Pretty Woman, I might have some advice. In Titanic, I might, why does he have to die? What's wrong with you people? It, that's reasonable, right? So know your vein, know your lane, right? So if you're someone who really seen things in a completely different way from the rest of the world, right? That's great. That's lucky. That's fortunate. It also means very people will get your stuff. But when you're able to sell people, hopefully you sell people who trust you infinitely on that. And they know, I can't really help and advice. If you're someone who's making stuff that we all sort of understand and we all sort of like, you should be open to advice and people, but you need to know the line of where it becomes counterintuitive, right? You want constructive criticism. You don't want sort of criticism that's going to slow you down, unproductive criticism, right? Okay, fantastic. Um, we're drawing to a close because we need to open it up for questions. And just in case you have a question, please drop it in the Q&A, in the chat box, and then we'll take it up uh, right about the hour of 5 p.m. So what was, what was your, I mean, first three, four, or three, the infancy of your career in, 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 in this industry, what was it like? Was it horrific? Was it cathartic? No, no, no. That, that's the beauty in Nollywood, right? Is that, like I said, if you want to get it made, you will get it made. I mean, that, the, the big thing is what your expectations are. But your dreams, Nollywood is excellent for dreamers. It really is. Like you go to Hollywood, you work in a restaurant till you're 40, 50, 60, you'll never make anything. You'll be doing extra. If you want to be an actor, you'll be an extra for 30 years. Then somebody will now say, oh, I have this small kidney. Do you want to be a kidney? You may never make it. In Nollywood, I'm not saying it's not hard, especially for actors, but for filmmakers, for us, we came back, what did we know? We ran a small ad agency and we said, we want to make this show called Before 30. And we started talking to people script this talk to this actor talk to this actor talk to this talk to this person and slowly you're pulling the money together and, da, 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 and you get to go the expectation is where you have to temper right because in hollywood to make a big film likelihood is that you have made it you are going to make another one or you you know except you really mess it up you are going to make some money you're going to all that but if it's not about that and it's just about getting to tell your story and make it it is fantastic where are you going to be in which world are they going to let me say there's an indian ninja and she's running around and she gets fighting the person and something like, like, where am I going to be able to shoot? I shot on Third Milan Bridge without closing down Third Milan Bridge. It's only in Nigeria that you can do that now. In Chicago, you want to go and shoot a scene with a girl with jumping off a bridge. You, the government has to agree six months in advance. They shut everything down. There's fire engine, there's this, there's that. In Nigeria, you looked at each other, I said, Sunday is not busy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, that's the beauty in it. Londonwood is, <laughs> Is a dreamer's hub. You can do whatever you want. So it, the challenge is the expectation. Is now when you think, by the time I do this one, ah, Mr. Adiko can't even call my phone again because I don't blow. I, I dreamer. Yeah, I'm not blowing anyway. I can't tell you that one for free. So that's the, but as far as the, the experiences for me were always great. And, and I'm someone who enjoys every process of filmmaking, but it's sort of always downhill for me which I don't know if it's the case for other people, but what I mean is the most exciting part is, so now everybody's talking about God calling. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the, I mean, the exciting phase for the next one I want to do. It's like, oh, this is great. Then when you actually write the script, it's a little less. Then when you actually shoot the film, it's a little less. Then when you're actually doing posts, it's a little less. Then when you're actually doing interview, and then it's a little less. I'm on the next. So that's just me personally. There's some people who enjoy post. There's some people who enjoy the production. There's some people, who, you know, but for me, it's literally, idea to write in, to shoot in, to post, to yeah, marketing and all that. Instagram life, oh, that's just the worst part possible. The awful part, go to the premiere, where, but that's the worst part. Next. <laughs> Technically, ideally, you know, um, it, it's up to you. But I think honestly, as long as your expectations are fine, I promise you, like, Nollywood is, is sweet potatoes. Mm. 
you, you, you keep talking about Nollywood being in its infancy and it's just like a blank canvas. You can literally paint or create anything. So let, let's just talk about something quickly. I noticed that, or rather in one of your interviews, you mentioned that you're, you're social media phobic, you know. Is, is that still the case and why? That is definitely the case. It is, Nigeria is as chaotic a world as can be. The humanity is chaotic. Why would you want to add, it, social media just takes everything and time stands it. I, I don't understand the appeal of social media. I've never understood, I've never had Facebook. But every time I see people on it, I get the addictive, ooh, but the problems that come with it just seem like so many. You make one comment, 60 people abuse you. You are running from two people in real life. 100 have just found you on Facebook. I, like, I, none of it makes any sense to me. I don't, so for me, no, no, no. Like, and, and then by the way, I cheat. I cheat because um, my friends hate me because I'm like, give me your phone. Let me see your Twitter, Kenny. They're like, go on, open Twitter. Man. Go on, go on. Let me just see. So I get all the sweet stuff that you people are get in without any problems. I chicken, I don't want any, well. So now I have, I didn't know anything on Instagram till three weeks ago when God calling Instagram needed to do an Instagram live. So they were like, you must do it, you must do it. So I said, okay, well, starting. So they gave me the password for, so I put it on my phone and I have God Collins Instagram on my phone now. And the person handling it hates me. He's like, don't say a word, don't cut. There's all these rules. Don't touch a picture twice, don't comment. Don't, so I'm, but, but I get to open it and see, oh, this uh, something, something, something is nice. And uh, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then I'm done. I pack it to one side. It's too chaotic. It's too much. And it's endless. WhatsApp status is too much as is. There's people who I'm like, <laughs> but we work together. And now I'm seeing you dance one with a TikTok dance on bikini on what I'm like, it, I, I just can't even, I don't even, and now the lines are blurred between business and social. Right, so it just feels like it just. I don't. I don't. Maybe you can teach me what the advantages are. I just don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. Okay. Oh, okay. I mean, fair, fair enough. You know, there, there are very many responses to to you know use of media for propping profiles and marketing. But again, we'll, we'll we'll put that in the parking lot and talk about it some other time. I have one more question because I know that people want to ask, so I, I don't want to dominate the whole space. Let's talk about stunts, you know, CGI effects, um, VFX, uh, special effects. There's quite a lot of that. Even in Banana Island Ghosts, you know, you had a lot of stunts. And then in, in God Calling, there's a lot of CGI. You know, let's just talk about that. What's your influence? How did you find it, you know, working with, an, with the Nigerian crew, you know, especially in post and, and, and all that. You know, let, let's just talk about that and then we'll open it up for questions. Yeah, great, great question. Um, so it is more proof to the things that I keep saying, right? About Nigeria being in its infancy. Why? Because people still see Bibi Shashara's work with CG as anomaly, as why, and I'm not saying we should be doing Avengers, that's not what I mean at all. What I mean is every film you watch today in Hollywood, every, and in most markets, no matter how basic the film, except it is, you're watching Friends, which is in a studio with four people and multi-cam, so et cetera. But everything you watch, which is just a regular film or one of these things, I promise you, first of all, if you're seeing an exterior shot, it's not real. And I don't mean it's not real as in it's a green screen. I mean, it's not real in terms of, they're just cleaning little things. Oh, we don't like the way that car is there. Or there's that street lamp shouldn't be. Special effects and visual effects, well, visual effects more so than special effects. Visual effects and CGI is mainstream in, filmmaking today. It is not a department that's interesting. It is like sound. It is like cinematography. You have to start to think of film. And the reason you have to start to think about this is because the world, we just talk about social media, the world is a globalized village today, right? And I keep saying there's a kid in Zamfara or by Elsa, I use those two, the tip, the tip points of our country, right? And they have some exposure to those worlds. So why should I watch your God calling when there's Avengers? Why? And it's not his fault. As well as he, I just want to watch something good. I want to escape. Nigeria is too hard. It's hot. It's not light. It's this, my 5 MB. I should now use it to watch your God calling. Why? So you have to try and make it at least comparable. Comparable may even be the wrong word because you can't be comparable to Avengers. But there needs to be a standard that you feel as though they say. So when we're doing the CG stuff, 
we're not doing CG stuff because we just want to do something different. We're doing it because we feel as though this story we're telling is not possible without that stuff, right? And it makes it more exciting, it makes it more interesting. The CG that most of you guys actually talk about and see, oh, the heaven shot at the end with the girl, oh, that's pretty, or oh, the bridge with the water, all that. Yeah, but that's literally 30% of the CG. We're constantly cleaning wire of the AC. If this frame you're seeing of me now, I would never let this be in my film. That little lamp on the side there, I'll clean that with CG, just be a white wall. We decide, oh, if, we do, if we can production design and put a nice picture behind, da da da. You think this, this wire is annoying me. There's dirty something here. There's the, that's what CG is doing today. That's why it looks great. You know, like Hollywood has a reason why it looks, that's where CG is cheating. And you can do those things as well. So I think you need to all reframe your minds as filmmakers that visual effects is a part of filmmaking today. It is not, it is not a, an interesting option. It is not optional. It's like sound. You have to do it right. You have to include it in stuff. You have to think how can this look like my picture. You know, so um, that's the way we look at it. But that being said, there's not that many people working on it. We definitely think we found some of the best people working on it. Uh, Benro Dubemi, Jerry Osai, there's a lot of other people, but those are three people that have done it for all the stuff that we've done from before 30 to Banana and goes to God Calling. And they're just like us, they're with everything else. They're studying, they're teaching themselves, they're learning, they're testing, they're going on YouTube, they're taking tutorials, Maya or After Effects, or all those things, Nuke, it, you know. And what Nemsha really offers people like this that is really great is, we are sort of bold enough to risk it on a big scale. So a lot of people want to do CG, but they want to do it for tiny things or maybe a commercial, then they'll bring it on from London or South Africa. We don't believe that. We're like, we'll try it. If the bridge looks terrible, then we remove it from our film now. That's, that's our mantra. We don't put nonsense on the screen. So cut the leg. And if it's bad, we will do something else. Don't worry. But we also have a good sense of what we know we can accomplish because we do tests, we do screen tests. So I think in, it just needs to be a, a mindset shift that says this is fundamental in filmmaking today, right? It is part of filmmaking. It's like production design. It's like sound. You have to do this in order to enhance your picture. Because remember, why should this kid in Zamfara watch my film? Why? There's Game of Thrones. You know, because I'm Nigerian, right? From the same village, I should now force my waste my data on your film. Why? So you have to do things that can give them an experience that is enough to escape it, right? And that's the idea. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have BB Shashur in the house. And for the last one hour, he's been giving us, he's been dropping it like it's hot, like they like to say. Um, thank you so much, BB, for this. So we're going to have questions now. There are a few that have been put in the chat box. I'm just going to read them out. and. You know, please feel free to just drop them. Or if you want to say it in person, just hold on once once we're done with these, then I'll read it out. Okay. Be so, moving so I can plug my computer in, but I'm with you. Okay, so if we get a bit dark, I'm sorry, okay. but I'm with you. Okay, all right. Uh, so question, someone says, this is Ebose Ehibelo. I want to produce films and shows for teens. I'm an independent producer, and I want to know what would be the best way for me to make money to make more productions. That's from Ebose Ehibelo. Um, so you 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 got me at the end. I was about to tell you, you're not making any money, but you said just to be able to make more productions. So okay, fair enough. Right. Um, there's, I mean, again, there's not a good answer that's direct. What I like about what you're saying is you think that there's a market that's untapped in teens, right? So it's a it's a good place to come in and prove your case study from, right? So what are the kinds of films you want to make? Why would teens watch it? How would they watch it, right? Unfortunately for us, and this is what I mean by the boring part of the work, but you have to do some of this part of the work, right? So the same way we went and put together a thing about churches, that is what you have to do about teens. I will be happy to take a look at that deck because I'm not convinced that that's a market that's interesting, but once you've done the work, I would love to piggyback off that work. So you have my ears for sure. But the key is you need to do research and say, this is how I think the teens will watch it. These are the kinds of things I think they'll watch. This is how I think you can make money off of it, even though it may not be much money. And this is why I think it's important in the industry. If you put those things together, you will have people that will listen to you. And then you now need to know what the project you want to make is and go full steam ahead. I promise you, you'll have people that will listen to you. The work is 
figuring out why this is a, an avenue that could be successful. It sounds different. I don't know anybody else except uh, a teen channel that Charles Novia is doing. I've not heard much about it, but you know, it's novel enough for you to really definitely get people listening. So work on it. Okay, so Bibi, there's a rejoinder to that question saying, what is Nollywood doing about incorporating teenagers, dance and fake life? Or rather, what are you doing about it? So the, I assume this question means that for if if the teenage market does exist, then how 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 is Nollywood taking advantage of that stream into you know incorporating it into their content? So it's twofold. Um, the first question was how um, how am I? I'm not. Period. Um, again, I told you I'm not certain that it is a market that is viable, but it is on you to prove that. That's a great thing that you have something. By the way, if everybody believes in what you're doing, you're not doing it. You're too late to the party or you're under the right thing, right? So the idea with every business is that for every two people that love it, five people think it's terrible because human beings are notoriously poor at knowing what they want. We are herd by default. That's just who we are. We are sheep. That's why there's very few followers in the world, right? So you are saying, here's a theory I think is right. You do need one or two smart people to say, you might be onto something. But most people should be saying, Tim, what? what is this one talking about? Do you understand? Like, so don't feel bad about that. Now it's on you. Everything in Hollywood is on you. It's not what is, if you're waiting for what is this person, jokes, nobody is doing anything. Just assume the answer to that question or whatever you want to say, what is blah, blah, blah doing about is nothing. That's the answer. So what are you doing about it? right? I believe there's a market here. Cool. Why? How big is that market? Where are they? How am I going to reach them? What do I need to reach them? How's this going to grow the industry? Why is this important to you? Put all that stuff together. Start knocking on doors, right? Why? Because what you're saying to Deepo is different from what everybody else is saying, right? You're saying, oh yeah. And he's going to be sitting in a meeting someday and he'll be like, yeah, there's this uh, cool fit based film. There's this cool. Day. And then there's this teen one too, just because you're different. Right, so it's on you. It's not what anyone else is doing. It's you that needs to sit down, put it together, prove your case theory, start small, make a teen web 10 minute thing that's only one episode and see if teens liked it or they didn't. Go to a school, let the school play it at the end of year, whatever it is, right? That's, it's, it's a case theory that you have to prove, not anybody else. Fantastic. So in Bosse, the, the, the shot has been, it's, it's been shot back at you now. So that's, that's your bit to handle. So we've got another one from Ajibola Ayomide. What roles demand specific stunts or attitudes to it? So do you cast actors that you know are already good with stunts or do you consider casting random great actors and training them for the movie? Oh, that's a great question. Um, no, you don't cast anybody that you know is good at it because none of us are good at it. So you cast people who are willing to try. That's the, the big thing, right? So I give you a simple example for, um, and I don't know if you end up seeing the behind the scenes in the Netflix uh, other thing, which is just another thing of knowledge here that we made sure we put on there so people can see it's not rocket science. It's hard work, but it's not rocket science. So we built a small piece of the third mainland thing on a you know 10 or 15 foot scaffold thing or whatever, that didn't have. And so what we did, and she was such a trooper, I just made the whole crew, I made it to a fun exercise. I just made the whole crew go turn and fall backwards, turn and fall backwards. And, this baby, and it's very scary. But by the time she's seen 30 people do it, and say, ah, ah, all of a sudden, she's a little more comfortable. She's a little more comfortable. But she was ready to do it anyway. But your job is just to find people who are willing to go on a journey with you, right? Again, you don't have enough of an industry. And the, what you've brought up is a perfect example of that. In Hollywood, you'd have had stunt people who can actually take them through courses. Agents who already tell you my client doesn't do this or my client does this or this, 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 this. This insurance company has already weighed out this. Like the infrastructure is there through every single bit of it just for stunt, right? For Tom Cruise to do what he does in Mission Impossible. The amount of people and plans and things that go in is night and day, right? You don't have that. So you're saying to someone, well, I'm going to somersault this car. They say, yeah, not okay. Yeah, not okay. Who are, who are going to do somersault? You say, okay, here's what we'll do. We won't do somersault with you in it. We'll do more. But this part, you have to actually turn upside down. We'll put my dress. I mean, so you're talking through these things at your auditions and all that. And all you're looking for is who's willing to go on that journey with you. The pool is already too small. Now, you can't start from a place of, I'm only going to cast people who will be willing to. What you're doing is you're saying, I don't care if you know how to fight. I'm willing to teach you and take the time for you to learn. Are you willing to go on that journey with me? 
and let's talk about it. You throw the onus on them as well. How can we do this to make it safe enough for you, right? With Chigo, we brought in one person. That's the only time I've ever brought in somebody. This lovely girl from South Africa who is a fighter, is a stunt person. She worked on Mad Max. You'll be surprised how easy and relatively affordable this stuff is because she doesn't get Mad Max work all the time. And she came and she taught people stuff. And, but we made it a thing. Like we found that person with Chi Girl. We worked on it together. We're drunk, falling down together, uh, doing this, doing that. And we don't have money, endless money. So we can't do it for weeks and weeks, right? So we only do it for, you know, three days, four days. And then we shot those scenes over two days, you know? So there's ways for you to do things that you think are important, but it's more about finding people who are willing to go on the journey with you. I hope that answered your question. Fantastic. I, I hope that answers your question. Okay, so Felix here is, is more of shooting a shot. So he's asking, please, how do I get to, in, to intern in your studio? I'm a Beam VFX artist who currently uses After Effects and Blender. And after watching Before 30 and God Calling, I really want to take my skills to the next level. I currently shoot with a GH5S and I rightly checked all the cinematographers on your film. Please don't intern at your firm. What can I do? You're super amazing and smart. And by the way, I need to know you more. That's a mouthful, but uh, <laughs> that is a mouthful. we have this, this poor Felix boy. There, there, everything he wrote at the end there is just a lie. He's just a lie. But okay, I'll take the credit. Fair enough. Um, as to internships, what I can do for you that's even stronger than that is I will introduce you to the people who are doing this work. And interestingly enough, uh, it's kind of coded, but I happen to know that Netflix is trying to get a bunch of people who do VFX work around here and get some internships and start some schools and all that. So, and I know the people who are going to run it. So I will introduce you directly to those people, even as simple as you saying, I use Blender because you have to have at least Google for you to know that word Blender, I know. So we're good on you for even just saying that, right? So I will introduce you to that. That's significantly more interesting than interning at us. We don't work enough in these kinds of productions for it to be worth your time interning. But when there is a production, I'm also happy to say, oh, Felix, you can come by and stop and see how we're doing, blah, blah, blah. I'm happy to do that. That's easy enough for me. If you're around, it, I do it all the time. People come, they watch, and it's on you. The information is there. You can stay in a corner and just, uh, or be Instagramming with people who are extras and all that, or you can come by the camera, hey, I'm Felix, I want it. Nobody's good. It's up to you. It's all there. So two things now I'm saying. One, if we're doing a production, which I don't know when the next production will be, I'm hoping sometime later in the year, happy to make sure that you're around and you can see some of that stuff, but I will also introduce you to the people and I would love to see the stuff that you're doing with your current shoots on the GH5 and all that stuff. So um, send me your number here, Felix. I will send you a WhatsApp message and then you just, and my email, just send me an email that says, we spoke on this and da 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 and um, I will put you in touch, okay? Fantastic. Thank you very much for that, BB. So, Felix, you said you were going to shoot your grenade today, and apparently you have, and, you know, the door, the door has been open to you, so all, all the best with that. Ayomide is asking, what other media people work with your studio? How can we reach your studio? That's them share. Um, so, again, I um, have no problem with people reaching out to me. Again, it's more importantly when they're doing projects. There's no media people. I don't know what you mean by that. You mean departments um, in terms of every aspect of a film sort of work with us, right? So costume people work with us, um, you know, makeup people work with us, but they change. Uh, production design people work with us. What doesn't change for me typically is my head of departments. My cinematographer has been the same. My sound person, Kulana, has been the same. My editors have been the same. My, you know, my colorist has been the same. So those things typically don't change for me. My producers have been the same then they now change their teams of people who work under them, right? Oh, I want this different assistant gaffer. I want this different assistant camera. I want this different, right? So I trust infinitely, right? I don't know sound. Why should I go and say, there's one correct guy in Abuja that I trust him with that's every day he wakes up, he's learning about sound. Then me, my small wisdom about sound, I'll now be telling him he doesn't know what he's talking about. Why? So once I know that this person is great, Whatever he says. So if he says he wants to bring this person, there's nothing to argue. This is your show. Ronnie, you know what you're doing. That's the way collaborative filmmaking works, right? Trust this person about costume design. So if they say that this is, I think she's wearing nonsense, but you're telling me that has the nonsense that makes sense. Okay, let's see. Let's get that's collaborative filmmaking, right? So at the end of the day, we have all those units. 
I don't know if that's what you mean by what media people work at your studio as to how you can reach the studio. The info is there. Um, I'm again, actually happy to share my email address. So anybody on here can send me an email at any time and say this, this, this. I'm notoriously slow, but the brilliance in that is I don't mind being disturbed. That's why I'm not on Facebook or Instagram. So email me 200 times because I don't, it's, I don't have to worry about DMs and other things. Send me an email, remind me the next week. I sent you an email this last week. I sent you an email this last week, that's okay. But what I will say to you is, we don't really have activity till we have a production that's going on, right? So what you really need to help yourself with is, this is what I want to do. This is how I think Nemshire can help, da, da, da. If it is, where can I find money for my film? I can't find money for my own film, so that's not really gonna help you. If it is, I've put together this business case, I'd like you to look it over and see what you think and tell me who to, sure, send it to me. Let's go to lunch one day, talk, you know, um, discuss all that, happy to do all those things. I mean, I'm good. Trust me, I'm going to learn as much from you as you learn from me. I'm a taker as much as I give. That's the essence of knowledge here. So it's not some altruistic thing Didi likes to do. No, I'm here to learn from you because none of us know anything. So together, if I know A and you know B, together we now know A and B. Yeah, there's still 24 letters to go. You savvy? Absolutely. Absolutely. So David Andrew is asking, do you accept already uh, written stories or is there a script that can be pitched to you or do you hire screenwriters? I'm just shooting my shot. I get that you're shooting your shot. Um, I, again, I, well, not only have I worked the same people, but I, I, we're cannibalizing each other. I write myself. We don't make enough projects. What is helpful to you is send me, you know, you can, send, you can even send the whole scripts up to you, but I'll read the first 10 pages. If I think there's something there, what I would do is I will always have you in the back of my mind as to the producers that do do what you're saying, right? So if I am, I'm not forming Pali. I'm not Pali with Mohabudu. That's not what I mean. But I mean, if we are in a scenario where we're talking, I'm like, oh, this is a great writer. And she's probably relatively cheap because, you know, you haven't done much. So I can do that, but I don't have a chest i'm not netflix i don't have a oh you're trying to buy this and unfortunately for you because it's in its infancy what my greatest advice to you will actually be is to if you're not a filmmaker in terms of director sorry all of us are filmmakers but if you're not a director find someone who you think understands the story and partner with and start to try to get that made it is unlikely people will the only things that hire writers are Africa Magic for 250 episodes, right? So they need 30 writers to come and do that. That's a tinsel, that sort of thing. But a writer that I've written the best script in the world, believe me, is better than Wedding Party and all that. That's what everybody else thinks as well, right? And there's not an infrastructure like Hollywood, again, because we're in our infancy, that is looking for that. So find a filmmaker just like yourself, looking for their own shots, looking for their, see how you can start to partner, make smaller stuff, put it, and then it's like, He's also, he's not special without me. He's a, and then that's how you start to get noticed. As opposed to trying to sell a script. The market is not robust enough for that. I don't think, I don't think. But send it to me in email or send what you're comfortable with. If you send a synopsis, it means you're saying you basically are trying to sell this script and I don't know who that is, but I'll keep my ears open for it. If you send the first 10 pages of a script, I will know whether you are able to write and be able to recommend going along. But I don't know that there's a direct action point I can help you with from me, I have a script. Um, how do you get it pitched? Okay. Let me just put my email address in here right now anyway, so that everybody sort of has it. Um, okay, thank, thank, thank you so much, Bibi. I just wanna ask you, what would you consider to, to be your breakthrough moment? Breakthrough moment. So I saw that question and I, I, I know the answer is gonna sound very pretentious, but I'm being, none of us have broken through anything. There is no break, like the beauty in Hollywood is, the minute you dream it, you can do it. So that would be the breakthrough moment is that I decided to make before 30 and I, I went and I made it. So if anything, maybe that, but I don't find that there is a moment that was breakthrough because I'm right back to where you are right now. And sure, I can open more doors for myself, but I'm now, I have an idea. And just like you who is saying, is, can somebody sell the script? I wish there was someone that I could write a script and go and sell it to. So how are we different? I'm now going to do what I'm telling the other person to do, which is I'm going to go and make a case for, just the same way I did with God calling. The next thing I personally want to work on, and by the way, share ideas. Don't feel people who steal it from you, all this nonsense. I don't need, 
first of all, if it's good enough, you're the person to make it, right? You will make it the best. Even if they take it, you can still make it. And plus, if you are a dreamer, I guess I dime a dozen. You have another one, another one, you are blessed anyway. So the, the chances of worrying about it being stolen versus you actually sharing it, getting better, getting it the chance of being made, to me is nothing. So right now, I am excited. Somebody just said to me after God calling, that girl, that girl, that girl. I don't know why there's no home alone in Nigeria with just a child, you know, being... And I was like, oh, I can't sleep. Amazing. So I had said, I'm leaving you people in Hollywood. Huh? But now I'm obsessing about a kid hero genre story. So I'm going to do exactly what I told that other gentleman to do. I'm going to go and try and make a case for this. Trust me, everybody will come. It's like Beauty and the Beast. This, 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 this. Well, in the same boat. So there's not a breakthrough moment, you know? Like it's, it's, you wake up every day you're trying to break through. You know? But the beauty is, you cannot do breakthrough every day. It's, this is normal Nigeria, you know? Even in Nigeria, when they give you the contract for the road and you go and buy G-Wagon, <laughs> the next year you're chasing contract by road again now. So what do we break through? In Germany, when you make that first bridge, you are done, you are the guy, they continue, right? In like, you can make Lagos battle today. Tomorrow you still go and sit and be begging senator and all that. So in every aspect of our life, you don't break through and that's it doesn't that's, that's who we are right so there's no breakthrough in life not for sure <laughs> uh, absolutely and uh, for someone who for someone who says that you know you're you're you 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 like to you like to deal with serious stuff you do you do quite have a sense of humor you know have you have you ever had a a, a gig in stand-up comedy no 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 that thing will flop no chance that thing will flop. Oh, yeah, I've shared email. Someone said share email. So I, I think I've shared email. What's the next? Okay, okay yes, uh, Baby has shared his email. So that, that, that's it there. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have just about 10 minutes to go. Um, please, can we just, do we have any more questions, first of all? Do we have uh, any there's something more questions? Stage play in Nigeria. I don't know much about the stage space. I only go there to, oh. to you know, from your perspective, what's the future of stage play in Nigeria? I only go there to find new acting talent. That's why I go. I went to a ton of stage plays and I go there for acting talent. Patrick Diabua, who was Banana Island Ghost, who was in God Calling as Sharif, who was in um, God Calling as the pastor, who was in Banana Island Ghost as the ghost, who was in Before 30 as Sharif, I found in a stage play, in just a small play somewhere. I thought it was great. Um, so I like stage plays for that reason, but I don't know where they're going. Nollywood's already hard, motion picture is already hard enough for me to sort of wrap my head around. It's the last thing I want to be thinking about is stuff that I know nothing about, but you know, God bless people doing stage plays. It is such a required, and if we think that we make no money, stage plays, uh, you know, they really, 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 really are doing it for passion because there's just really very, very slim pickings there. Mm. Okay, final question from me, just in case we don't have any others. So, so we sort of noticed that most filmmakers, or rather directors, seem to work with the same set of people. So it might be, especially for actors. Why, why is that the case? It seems like he operates in bands. Yeah, it, it's trust. It, it just takes so much in terms of, um, because there is no infrastructure, right? Um, even though in other worlds too, where there's, you know, Scorsese worked with De Niro forever and now he works with Leo DiCaprio a lot, you know, like that, like that. But technically, if you work in a bank, there's been a process for vetting that for you, right? This HR has told you this person is right, they're this, they're. so you're supposed to, until something goes wrong, you're supposed to believe this IT person can last for the next 30 years, no matter what you're trying to do, right? And they're supposed to adapt, you train them, you all that. Uh, because what we do is subjective and because there's no infrastructure, it's hard for you to believe that this is the person. But once you do, it's then like, how do you think different? How do you, it's just hard to break the, the filmmaker's mind away from something that they know is already successful, right? So it's not a not willingness to work with other people. People get excited to work with other people. I, the, probably the toughest part for me and probably another reason why I don't do social media and why I hate events, is that every event is, actors are my friends, but every actress, every actor, you've been saying we'll work together, when are we going to work together now? And, and, and I'm like, I'm only going to do one film every two years. 
and I'll cast six people. There's 500 of you. And we're all friends. But at the end of the day, what do you want me to do? I can't cast more than six of you. So trust, it's the biggest reason why people stick in clicks, right? Is because I now know what Patrick Diabwa can do. I know what Tina Mbak can do. She's one of the most fantastic character actors. You don't have to worry about. You just know she gets the character, get to go. I just worked with Sofia the first time in Chemist and Chemo. Same thing. You could just see when I need something that just improvs on the move and sort of understands inherently what a cultural man is feeling. And I didn't talk about I So for me to now go through that learning process again, I'm not that excited to do it. You know, it's trust. Okay, we've got one. I think we'll take the last question from Jennifer. So what are the tips for shooting your shots to prospective investors and getting them to invest in your film or story? And what advice do you have for a producer that's interested in creating a musical film? Why can't people ask me questions that I can give you uh, happy answers to? I feel like I'm always putting people down. You know? So let me start with the second one. God bless you. Uh, musical and whoever cracks that genre, by the way, whoever cracks that genre, forget genre rhymes. That person is gone because we love music so much. We in Nigeria, we love, like, is a part of our, be it praise and worship, be it uh, Bese. We just love music. So at the end of the day, whoever can crack that, here's the problem. It is so well done in Hollywood. So, and it is so finicky, right? It's easy to make it cheesy. And Dream Girls is great, but it was looking a bit cheesy for a second. And you know, you don't, so as opposed to the other narrative pieces that give you such long leeway, right? Game of Thrones is boring for many hours of Game of Thrones, but if they give you this great thing at the end where, what's her name, looks at Jon Snow, and you're, uh, you know, you get the feeling that you need. God calling is slow for the most part, but once Gary starts crying, mama, mama, you too, your heart starts break. So there's leeway there. If I come to the first dance and song and the song is not, let it go, let it go. It's not sweeting you like that. And the dance is looking one cat. Sure, she can. So it's such a finicky genre, right? Musical. It looks cheesy. It's tough to do all that. But whoever cracks it, uh, let me tell you something. Sang it. So God bless you. Work on it. Work hard on it. Keep going at it. Um, make sure that you are not deceiving yourself. You know those people that go and all these voice on Nigeria either they can't sing, they can't. It's the same thing. If the song is not good, don't shoot it. If the dance is not, don't do it. If the choreography is not, but don't. But God bless you. Keep going at it. Try it. The stuff as to prospective investors. I mean, I, I feel like we've been saying that all afternoon. There's not a way. It is specifically you. First of all, work on a case that you feel makes a good case for something. That's number one. Two try and make stuff yourself. If that means sort of scrambling money together, right? You need to do that, right? So friends, family, all that stuff, right? As opposed to trying to convince major platforms or whatever it is, because the first thing those ones will ask you is, what have you done? Let me see the work that you've done. And that's the, when they're playing with that kind of money, they don't, they're not gonna take a chance on just an idea. So show this musical thing that you want to do, just do one, cool, small, very small choreograph bit. That's interesting, right? Yeah, I don't know how, I don't have no idea what your thing is over. If I saw some people on where the Makoko boats out on the water and there's a drone coming over on them and they're standing and balancing with their fishnets and the song is sweeting me and they're throwing their nets and that's all like, I'm, sign me up, I'm ready to go. You get it, do you get what I'm saying? So figure out how you can make that thing that's going to be interesting to people, right? And then network, network, network. You're doing it now. You're coming to this. Yeah, you guys are doing it in your church. Do it with other things as well. Send people your ideas, send it to people. But I don't think the way is to, we don't have enough of an industry with enough infrastructure where you can just say, I want to pitch. There's not elevator pitches per se going on daily. So it really is about trying to get it made yourself or some version of it or some small way or something and use that as a proof case to people and network, network, network. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for, for your time. And I want us to please just appreciate BB Shore. He's been, he's been, I think he's been, he's literally been on fire today. Thank you very much, BB. Please unmute on, on yourself and just say thank you to, to BB as well. Thank you, BB.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Bibi. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bibi. Thank you. So, so I'd, I'd like to call Bessie to Bessie is one of, also one of the leaders of the community group. Thank you, so sir. Give a vote of thanks so that we can um, we can let you go. So, Bessie, over to you. Thank you, thank you, Deepo. Do we get to good see afternoon, you? everyone? Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, BB. Thank you for your time. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Okay, thank, thank you so you much for coming and spending um, this time with us. I'm pretty sure everyone here is living with valuable insights. So thanks so much. Um, usually, our next section would be the shoot your shot, but people have done that. So I just want to give five more minutes to anyone who still wants to do this. Is there anyone here? Like to shoot their shots? Yes, yes, please. Okay, All good right, afternoon, everybody. Go good ahead, afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. So, um, my shots is to BB. Um, I currently work on a documentary project, so it's pending right now, and it's um, regarding Nollywood veterans, high to Nollywood legends, and it's about you know going back to the genesis of how Nollywood started. Um, pretty much from some of the things you said, I believe your contribution, and I'm just talking about you know, your aspect of the evolving of Nollywood and you, your own point of view you know, about what Nollywood is. You keep talking about it being an infancy. We'd love for you to share your view and talk about you know, the things you know about Nollywood, the stories and some of the films that Caught your attention that um oh, you that still makes you believe yes sir so i would love to have you um future as a guest in my document so um you know i'm sure you know it's one of the things i would not love to do but i would absolutely do. I think what you're doing is important um i would Yay. All, I, all i would ask is that you give me a um sort of um pretty decent understanding of what the theme and all that stuff is about the documentary. It does, it's not going to change my mind. It's just going to help frame how I speak so I don't sound idiotic in terms of I'm um, here saying Nollywood is in infancy and the entire theme of the piece is about the people who made Nollywood, you know, 40 years, you know, things like that. Just as long as I understand what the theme and tone and all that stuff is, or that I'm so, so, so happy. I, I'm glad you're making it. They, they built something out of nothing nothing pure air pure air and it went on mm. so i think it's really really great what you're doing i think there's stories need to be told i'm happy to help in any way i can um and when it's done hopefully we can get it some distribution we'll talk to some people and take it from there so lovely let me know when i'm all yours um yay thank you very much sir <laughs> an email and lisa has to stop quickly quick mr Dico is really <laughs> I, um, so I, I've, I've told them about this sound matter, I've, and you guys can bear me witness. I mentioned this. Sorry. The sad thing has to stop, okay? So thank you. I'm happy that he's bringing it, bringing it to the fore, okay? <laughs> thank you. I think David, David has one situation. Bessie, over to you, please. Yes, David and Juwan, you can go ahead and speak, please. And I think it's fair that they show their face now. All these people saying they're shooting shots in with no camera, then me and Dipo are- Oh yeah, David, show your face. Okay, good evening. Is he, good evening, everyone. My name is David Andrew. So I'm an actor, I do stage acting, but I want to move to screen. So I've not really been, I've not really been on screen like that. So I'm shooting my shots out there. There's anyone who needs an actor. I can work for free too. Who needs an actor for screen? I'm open. Thank you. Yeah, you don't have to work for free. Um, anybody telling you you should work for free is a lie. Is a lie, is a lie, is a lie. Um, it's not going to be good money. So it already is not good money. So why should they take the not good money away from you? Um, but what we will do is, um, I, I think there's about, you know, two, three productions at any given point in time that I kind of know are going on. And I'll just have them at least read you in terms of put you on, on your phone or whether you have to do what is called a virtual monologue or virtual, what you call it, and see if I can send stuff to people. You send it with your headshot. Um, and if there's something that I'm doing next, again, same thing. So what you do is in your email, you're just saying, 
David, we spoke to you about acting and getting me some auditions. And uh, one, we try and do that and see what it, but again, with acting, you know, God bless you guys. You knock on a hundred doors before you get one. So, and like yes, I told you, people already like people, you know, so don't feel discouraged. You got to just keep knocking on doors. You're doing the right thing. This is, this is exactly what you do. I will try and get to people at least look at the tape that you need. Thank you, sir. By the way, people, sorry, right. I, I don't want to be, because I was, I've been trying to obviously sanitize my thinking and talk, talking through. Is okay. it, uh, it, well, I guess they can be the arbiter of that, but is there only a certain kind of projects that they are working on, or should I put them forward for whatever the kind of project it is? Do you understand what I mean? In terms of it's not faith-based, it's not, shit, yeah, like, yeah, like David, yeah. put them forward for anything. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, anything. The, the, the only difference is that it's, it's because we we all, and not all of us are members of the same church, but we're all just sort of organized by the church. So the only, the, the common, the homogeneity that we're, yeah, yeah. So we're all, we're all interested in film and theater, but people have different interests. People are coming from different places. Um, some are not even based in Lagos, some are not even based in Nigeria. So um, they're open to all kinds of projects. Wow, that's awesome. That's all. It's great what you guys are doing. I, the reason I asked is to not, I don't know what these stories or scripts are, but I don't want um, to have a scenario where um, they put uh, David on one story now where he's uh, snorting one line or twerking, and then he says, it's that puts me in this movie, and everybody's now blaming you at Covenant. That's it. So our hand is not there. Our hand is to put you there. You decide what you want to, to do. Okay? Sure. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Cool. Bessie, over to you. Is Bessie still there? Um, okay, do we have any more? Bessie, are you still there? Looks like she's muted. Do you have anyone who, who anybody who has- Yes, um, yeah, my next work. Okay. Yes, um, thank you. I didn't quite hear the last thing that was said due to network issues, but is there anyone else who'd like to shoot their shot before we wrap up today? Good evening. Good Can you evening. hear me? Yes. Good evening, Ajibola. Okay. This evening has been amazing with Mr. BB Sasori. I am also a young person interested in acting, so I am open to whatever role I am able to get. Thank you. Yep, just uh, again, uh, same thing. Just say in the email that you sent to that email address, title it so I get a sense, um, you know, what this talk was and then state specifically what you are interested in and how you think I can help. And I'll know what to do in terms of putting you towards uh, certain things. Ideally, if you already, you can make it easier and faster. If you already have a headshot, if you already have any work you've done in the past, if you have, just go ahead and send that straight away in the email. Otherwise, I know, okay, this person hasn't necessarily done this, but this is where they're going and they'll be able to do some self-taping. That's likely the way it's going to end up be, being for you guys that are the actors. It's likely going to be a self-taping. Read, watch things on YouTube, learn, see how people are doing it, then prepare for something, get a monologue of your own, or maybe I can convince the people to send you the sides. Sides are the small parts of the scripts that you're supposed to tape. And you give it a good whirl. Give it a real shot. Don't just stand in front of a phone and kidding, because then, you know, there's professional actors trying to do it as well, and they'll just dismiss what you're doing. So, yeah. Okay. And we'll, Thank we'll you, it. sir. No problem. Okay. Is there anyone else who would like to go ahead? Yes. Good evening. I'm Dokas. Good evening, Doc. The floor is yours. Okay, so okay, so he he mentioned that um, I saw God calling on Netflix, and I really love that. I, I I was able to go to the cinemas to watch it, but I'm happy that it came on Netflix. Having said that, I'm a content acquisition person for a TV channel right now, so I'm shooting my shots, letting you know that in case you have any contacts or any 
connect to put in the good world because I'd love to work in Netflix also to acquire more movies for Netflix and work with them because I love their standard of working. I love everything about Netflix. So if he knows anybody there, I'm putting the good word for me. Thank you. I do not. And as a matter of fact, well, I do, but I more importantly, I'm not even, I, I'm very honest. I'm not even sitting pretty with Netflix right now. They are not happy with me. So technically no, no. <laughs> you don't even want to use me for a reference. Um, but I think things, to do these things are to, you know, follow those people on LinkedIn. Um, there's a guy that's the content guy. His name is Ben something. Um, you can Google it or I, you send me an email. I'll send you his name, follow him okay. on LinkedIn, send your resume and you do what you're doing now. Say, Hey, this is what I've worked for in the past. This is it. I see that you're watching a lot of, you're putting a lot of great stuff. Send me a little cover letter. You're putting a lot of great stuff on Netflix, but I think you guys just have too much work to do. I think there are systems that could really help you guys in da da da. I'd love to talk to you about it in you know 30 minutes if you have time for a call. Send it in every week, every week, every week. You never know. Like, see what happens, but have a plan as to how you think. It's not just please hire me. Do you get? Have a plan as to how you oh, I watch, yeah. let you know that I watch a ridiculous amount of stuff on Netflix. I get it. I think I can help by this, this, this. If you I would love to talk to you about, you know, that sort of thing. Bring value to the table. You never know where it'll go. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Is there anyone yes. else? Yes. Okay, go ahead. All right, so I'm shooting my shot at Mr. BB as well for an acting role. Uh, sorry, who's this? I, I don't know who's speaking, but whatever the case, um, because I can't find where you are. Um, anyway, whoever it is, send again, like we've said, for all people who want to take a chance to the acting, what I need so that we, we don't have to repeat it, what I need is send me an email to the email address that I posted here and title it what it is, right? So this conversation and specifically for acting, if you have any headshot pictures that you think are great and professional, not, you know, your selfie side profile thing in one uh, dress that you thought was really nice, but stuff that's sort of professional. Send that, send what you, the work you've done. And if it's okay, if you don't have any of that, then we will try and say, okay, how do we get things that this person can read for, this person can sort of, yeah. and I'll just send it to the people that I know and see if we can get something for Okay, thank you so much. Um, is there any, anyone else who'd like to shoot their shot or we can wrap up right now? Okay, I think I think that's all for today. So once again, thank you so much, BB. Before I hand over back to Deepo, I have just one question for you. It just came to mind right now. I remember seeing God's Calling in the cinemas and one of the things that struck me about the film was how intentional it was with the use of sound design. Right, so I wanted to ask, was that, um, it, it, it appeared very intentional. So was that super planned out or it was just something that, you know, towards the end you felt was going to be very helpful because the sound design felt as a character itself. You know how sometimes your camera, um, your camera choices, right? They can be a character, they can feel like a character in and of themselves. So was your sound design. So what, how, how was the process like with that for you? I think I think you've said it. I think it certainly is all specifically planned and chosen and intentional for lack of better words. But yes, um, it is very, very much so. Um, I've worked with the same sound person. Kulan and Ikyo is, I think, one of the best in Nigeria. Um, and so we obsess about the same movies, the same type of sound, the same thing. So as we're thinking through, I, I do this where when I'm thinking through stuff, I'm involving all these people in the process. So he's already going and thinking, what does it sound like to be going through what is hell? What does it sound like when you're standing at the edge of the bridge? What does it sound like if you're on a canoe just floating in the middle of the lagoon? You know, all of those things. Um, how do people feel when their eyesight is sort of going out of place? What are the sounds that you're going to enhance there and things like that? And you know, even Ennio Mero with music, we're very, very particular about the kind of music that we put in. So 
it, it's a fundamental part of filmmaking. It's a fundamental part of storytelling. It's a fundamental part of human experience. Um, and so it's something that I don't think, I think we need to get past the part of just even getting decent sound for dialogue. If you can't even do that, there's no reason for you to not have that today. It's hard. Nigeria is hard. Oimbo doesn't have to worry about generator sound. They don't have to worry about the window doesn't ever close properly. So ping, ping outside, even if it's in a quiet residential area, all those things. But you have to get a way to get above those things, right? That's your job. That's filmmaking is physics. You're solving problems. That's what it is. To figure out how to shoot underwater, it was nothing but solving problems. We build a tank. We shoot in a pool. Now we can see the tiles. Do we this, do we that? So we had to come up with a thing that said, literally physics. We, what makes it feel like it's underwater? Refraction of light. That's what, okay, so what if we put a big vat of water on top of someone, big shoot light through it, that are, oh, cool, now we slow her down, we put wind, make sure her hair is blowing, wow, cool, then we texture, we put bubbles, so she's never in water, but you feel as if it's, it's, it's problem solving, so you have to solve problems all through your, your filmmaking, and sound is just another example of that, and it's cheating, it's a way to, you know, after a bomb goes off, what will you hear, you hear the crackling of fire, you hear the wind, you hear this heat of the sun. You hear, so it is fundamental that you do take sound as not just dialogue cleaning, but how do you, your contemporaries, I don't know if there's any Lord of the Rings fans, but just to give you a sense of what people are doing in the other world so that you know that you're not playing. There, when there's the, the not the Urukai, which are the big annoying ones, but the orcs, the little <laughs> that scrap off the walls and da da da, da and when they're chasing them, Frodo, they didn't have a sense of what sound to do. So they, People went, these were people, they put bottle caps, Coke and Pepsi, the cap under their shoe. They went inside a tunnel and they went and started going dozens of them with their friends. They just gave their friends, made a night of it, put bottle caps under everybody's shoe. We start dancing, start, and we record it. And now you have this crazy that it's problem solving. It's you have to be in touch because again, the boy in Zamfara. Why should I watch your God calling? There is Lord of the Rings. It, because we're from the same tribe, doesn't mean anything to me. I, I, it's my data. I, this money is hard to come by. So you must do stuff that actually gives it a chance for it to be good enough for them. You have to, it's problem solving. And the goal of it is to get to do it again and to get to do it again and to get to do it again. That's it. Shoot. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you all so much. This was really, really great. I'm really, really honored, humbled to have had you people listen. Um, hopefully we all learn something from each other. Uh, thank you guys again. Good luck with what you're doing. Reach out to me whenever. And thank you Deepo, for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, well, baby. baby. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Have a good have one. A, have a good Thank you very much. God bless. God bless. OK. All right, guys. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we'll send you the recording, right? Right. Okay, cool. All right, I guess we can we can end the meeting. Bye-bye.